What's going on guys and welcome to free pilot training. Today I'm going to show you how to use an aim point and this technique will work in just about any trainer plane but today I'm using a Cessna 172H. Come on I'll show you how to set this up. Uh, so the first step in doing this is to get your seat height set correctly if your seat has adjustable height and I've got another video that shows how to do that if, um, if you want to check that out but the first thing we need to do is we need to pick a reference point on our windscreen. Now for you guys, that's gonna be straight above the yoke here and about a fist length above the dash for full flap landings. So I'm using garage sale stickers today because they come off really easily. Um, so in this case, we would put the sticker right here, um, straight in line with the yoke. Now today, my camera is gonna be mounted directly behind me. So I'm gonna put it directly above the mag compass about a fist length above the dash in this example. Uh, and that way you guys can see um, the spot directly on the runway. So for the rest of the time, this is what we're going to be referring to as our reference point. And uh, you can use these garage sale stickers, but uh, once you get used to it, you can actually just imagine this spot on the windscreen. You won't need this anymore. Let's get this thing going and uh, go test out this technique. Claremore traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray taking runway 36 for closed traffic. Claremore. Finals clear. Laps are up, car heats off, landing and taxi lights on. Line up with the stripes here, full power, power set, power checks, airspeed's coming alive, a little pressure's in the green, maybe a little left wing down there, 55 knots, rotate, alright, clear left, okay, so we're turning crosswind here, alright, so we picked a reference point, our little dot right here. Uh, next, we need to pick our aim point, and typically, the aim point is roughly two to 300 feet in front of your landing spot, your intended point of touchdown. So what I like to do is I like to pick the threshold, and that's usually going to land me on that first or second strike, roughly, depending on the winds. Okay, so now we want to control our descent with power, and uh, when we're using an aim point, you're going to use a combination of pitch and power power to control your descent first, and then um, pitch to control your airspeed, but you kind of need to use them together, and you'll see that here in just a second. There's our pattern altitude, Claremore traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, left downwind 36, Claremore. All right, seatbelts on, fuel sector valve on both, makes your best power, landing taxi lights, we'll just leave them on. We'll get the rest here in just a second. So the, for this first one, I'm going to stay high on purpose here, and you'll see my reference point is going to be above my aim point. All right, being my touchdown point, power's coming back. We're in the wide arc. First notch flaps. One, two, three. The way I'm going to get high is I'm actually going to turn early. First 70. A little bit, a little bit early here. Claremore traffic. Skyhawk 3148 X-ray. Left base 36. Claremore. I'm going to go ahead and roll more flaps. And you may not be able to see it quite yet, but we are pretty high. Full flaps. Let me pitch down for my airspeed of 70 knots. Claremore traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray base to final, 36, Claremore. Okay, so rolling final, you're going to be able to see, I want my reference point on my aim point. So once we hit our 60 knots, you'll see, are we high? Yes, our reference point is well above our aim point. So let's pull that power back to idle. And now you can see, like, the airplane is just sink, starting to sink down. And we pitch down 60 knots. The airplane's starting to sink down. And as our reference point starts coming down to our aim point, we'll start feeding that power back in. And what this is doing is it's creating a more stable approach, but it's also allowing us to touch down on a specific spot. And I think we're actually going to touch down on that second stripe right there. So keep the power back to we're still a touch high. A little less wind down here, so I'm going to feed in that power. Now we're going to go, I'm landing assured, idle power. Change my aim point just for a second. Oh, a little bit of a gust of wind there. And then just pull that reference point up. Landed just a little in front of that second stripe. Carb heats off, flaps coming up. Power. Wind's a little bit gusty today, so you see we kind of popped up a little bit there. No big deal, and 
We just refroze that pitch attitude and then just let the airplane settle down onto the runway. All right, climbing out of 70 knots. Okay, so for the next one, I'm going to be a little bit low on purpose. And the reason for that is because um, I want you to see me the, that the reference point is going to be below my aim point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little power in to drag my reference point up on my aim point. And what this is doing is this is going to ensure that we have a three degree glide slope. Once again, that's going to make us more stable. And uh, in addition to that, if you always have the same three degree glide slope when you land, you're also going to find that your flare is going to need to be the same every single time. And that's going to really improve your landings. Claremore traffic, Skyhawk 314, X ray, left downwind 36, Claremore. All right, so we're going to be we're going to be low on purpose here. All right, seatbelt's on, fuel circuit valve on, both flaps are up. Mixture best power, throttle set. Landing, landing and taxi lights on. We'll get the rest to be in the numbers. I'm still a little bit low. You know what? We'll just stay here because we're wanting to be low on purpose. All right, there's our perch point. Power carvey in the wide arc. First notch of flaps. I'm going to go ahead and lower too many because what that's going to do, flaps cause us to increase our descent rate. So we want to get down sooner, so you can see that we're too low, what we need to do. All right, turn base. Looking for 70. Claremore traffic, Skyhawk 314, X-ray left base, 36, Claremore. Claremore traffic, uh, helicopter 113 Alpha Echo, about five miles to the uh, west, 2300. Uh, Going to be entering a uh, left base for 36, uh, traffic in sight, we'll following. Copy, we'll watch for you. All right, so now, turn and final. Play more traffic, Skyhawk 314, X-ray base to final 36. All right, so turn to final, pitch it for 60. Now take a look here. So you can see, like, our reference point is well below our aim point, because remember, we said our aim point was the threshold. So you can see my aim point right here is below my threshold. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to put in a little power. So I'm pitching for my airspeed, and I'm increasing my power to arrest that descent rate, to drag that reference point back up to my aim point. This is going to allow that us to be on a three degree glide slope. A little bit fast, so I'm going to reduce, I'm going to pitch up just a little bit and reduce the power to offset that. Seems like we have a little bit of a wind shear right here, so I'm going to put in a bump of power to offset that. All right, landing's assured, so let's go idle power, change my aim point just for a second, and then put that nose right on the horizon. Carb heat. Flaps. Power. Power set. Good power. Airspeed's coming alive. Oil pressure's in the green. That guy is five miles out. He should be... He should be coming in about the time we turn crosswind. All right, so for the next landing, what we're going to do is a flaps up landing. And what you're going to find with the flaps up landing is that the reference point is a little bit closer to the dash. I think in this airplane, it may be closer to the cowling, the way my eyes are set. Um, but it's not going to be... Helicopter 113 Alpha goes into left base for 36. Okay, he's in the left base. Uh, but it's not going to be this reference point anymore. And the reason for that is because... Um, when you're doing a no-flap landing, you're closer to the landing attitude. And that's why a lot of student pilots find no-flap landings easier, because you really don't have to do any kind of flare. Clear left. You see him? Okay, I got, I got him. him. All right. Rolling downwind. Thermal traffic, uh, 113 is on final 36. Sidestep to Todd. Sidestep to what? Probably going to sidestep oh, over to, to the, the yeah. apron. Climb more traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray. Left downwind, 36, Claremore. We've got you in sight. Yeah, that's a good copy. I have you in sight as well. We're well out of your way. All right, seatbelts on, fuel sector valve on both. Flaps are up for now. Mixture best power, throttle set. Landing and taxi lights staying on. Here is 1700. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay high for this one so you can kind of see um, the reference point on a no-flap landing. And once again, this is a Cessna 172, but this this technique works in a lot of different trainers. I use it a lot in, you know, Piper Cherokees, works just fine. Um, so try it out, see if you like it. All right, we're getting close to our perch point. Car feet's coming on, flap, or sorry, uh, power's back, and flaps are staying up for this one. Uh, so the thing about no flap landings is, one, you want to land a little bit faster. So we're going to land at 70 knots um, because 
we will float a little bit longer, but we also have less lift. Um, but we also have less drag, so that's going to cause us to float. Um, but the other thing is that if you don't start getting down with no flap landings, the only thing you have to your advantage is power, and you also have a slip. So um, you don't have flaps to help you get down because flaps increase your descent rate. All right, so I'm going to stay a little high or just a touch high. Claremore traffic, sky hot, 3148 x-ray, left base, 36, Claremore. There it is, roll final. Claremore traffic, sky hot, 3148 x-ray, base to final, 36, Claremore. All right, so, it's gonna be roughly the cowling here. We're rolling out on final, 70 knots. So now you can see uh, the front of the runway, which is the threshold, is a little bit hidden. So we're, we're high on glide slope. So let's pull that power all, all the way back to idle. And we can also use that slap, slip to our advantage. So I'm pitching down for 70 knots. I'm a little slow correcting. And as we start catching that, we can take that right back out. So our aim point's looking pretty dang good. I mean, I'm a little fast, so I'm going to pitch up. We're a little high. i use more slip here. A little right of center line, but I'll correct that at the last minute here. Probably going to land on that second or third stripe over there. We're already at idle power, shift the aim point. And now we're already kind of in a landing attitude. Just kind of let it float here. They just float with less flaps in. Just gonna let it keep going. There's a thousand footers. Car beat, flaps already up, power. And that's just how simple it is to use an aim point. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one. Tip. Approach, you're not going to believe this. I just bought it free pilot training. I'm going to keep on watching.